Last week I had a scheduled hospital stay for a while. So I powered this uh, BG7 TBL signal generator up and I set it for 10 megahertz uh, channel 1. There is no external reference. In other words, this thing accepts or will accept a, an external 10 megahertz input. 3.3 volt peak to peak indicated on the, on the generator. I also have powered up this uh, get a little light here somehow. This uh, phase lock loop uh, GPS disciplined oscillator. And so this is a refreshing sight to see. The yellow is the sine wave output from the GPS disciplined oscillator. And the violet is the 10 megahertz output from the signal generator. They're not connected in any way except to the input of the oscilloscope. And you can see that they're all, they're, if not perfect, they are very, very close. This yellow being a GPS stabilized signal. This purple for, being from the TCXO internal to the uh, signal generator. So that gives me a degree of confidence sort of shared between two of them. Maybe they are speaking Chinese to each other. After all, they were sold and built by the same guy. Same organization. But I'm not certain that either one's correct, although this lends a, a lot of, of confidence to the fact that they're both right. You've seen me use this setup many times where Two repetitive signals are displayed on the oscilloscope. I'm triggering off the purple one, so it's not moving. And what this does is compare the frequency or the pulse length of the two signals. The difference is the fact that they're moving relative to each other. Now I'm going to vary the, let's see, but it won't make any difference. I'm going to vary one of the signals by one hertz. I'm increasing the frequency by one hertz. I'll decrease it. I'm going to decrease it one hertz. See how it reverses relative to the purple? So, although I can compare the frequencies and maybe even match them if I slow the movement down, I can't not measure the frequency this way. However, if I knew exactly one of these signals frequency, say 10 megahertz, I could tell if the second one matched the first one. This the way it's done now is just a comparison. So what I need is to verify my 10 megahertz oscillators is I need a sine wave or a wave that's exactly 10 megahertz. Then I could display the 10 megahertz known frequency here and put the unknown 10 megahertz in here and see how close they are together. Where to get a 10 megahertz signal with an extremely high degree of accuracy. Well, it turns out there is one available. 1,400 miles west of here is WWV. Uh, they have a half-wave antenna on 10 megahertz, and they transmit an AM carrier, sometimes modulated, sometimes not, with the power of 10,000 watts. If I could receive WWV at 10 megahertz, 
I could strip away with a, a filter the sideband information and I would be left with some sort of a sine wave that's pretty close to 10 megahertz. The signal WWV transmits in Fort Collins, Colorado is 10 megahertz plus or minus 10 to the minus 22. If I were able to receive that signal here, it would probably be 10 megahertz plus 0 0.01 hertz. The reason that the signal is degraded frequency wise is because of reflections and uh, Doppler shift that takes place in the 1400 miles between WWV and my place. I have a long wire antenna hooked up to a Chinese uh, 49 to 1 ballon and it's input into the spectrum analyzer. I found an AM signal at uh, 9.3 megahertz, something like that. Uh, signal's about minus 45, 40 decibels. And it's in the demodulation mode, so I'll turn it, turn the volume up. Mark your wish list, pray, but then in the silence, listen for the still small voice to speak to you. That's how we get to know him. It's how he writes his So it's a Christian on broadcasting on service. I don't know where. how we get that one-on-one -on -one connection with him. It's so important for the days ahead. It's all well and good to know prophecy, but if you don't have that one... Let's look for 10 that? megahertz. Are we learning to listen for his... So there we see something at 10 megahertz. Nine point nine nine nine. Go back to demodulation. Turn it on. Turn the volume up. And you see I don't hear anything at all. The ten megahertz signal's down around minus seventy. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but in the background, I can hear a little bit of audio from WWV. That I wanted to build a WWV receiver. without any uh, heterodyning or anything, just a straight uh, amplifier with the frequency set by some crystal filters with the intention of just getting WWV signal off the air amplifying it to something I can use. I remember a, a QST article that had a description of such a receiver. And looking around, it's uh, WD8 DSB. This is a photograph by this gentleman of a receiver board. Now, apparently, he made or had printed his own circuit boards. He does not sell them. Here's the same receiver on a board offered by a commercial board house named FAR, F-A-R, Circuits. So I ordered, uh, you can pick any frequency you want by uh, picking crystals and maybe varying the turns on the transformers. This is a 10 megahertz build. 
This is the same picture only you know, printed differently. 10 megahertz build and a 5 megahertz build. The difference being the 5 megahertz has some transformers in and out. So it's the same board, some different components. I ordered two boards to build a receiver and then two boards to build what he calls a pre-amplifier, but I would call a post-amplifier. It's intended to be placed between or after uh, the receiver. In other words, it amplifies the output of the receiver. It's not a preamp uh, boosting the input. So I ordered two of these and two of these. I have ordered from this fellow before. He's very nice. His website has a huge listing of boards in stock. The package contained two of the receiver boards and two of the amplifier boards. Uh, I paid twenty dollars. Fifteen for the two boards, well four boards, and five dollars shipping. These are not quite as nice as Chinese boards in that they have no solder masks. But they are certainly serviceable. And this was in the uh, February 2018 QSD. This is a little pre amplifier board or amplifier board. I'm in the process of uh, assembling parts needed to make these boards active. And C6 is a ceramic trimmer, and I needed to get the pin layout so I can go through my junk box and see if I have something that will fit there. Now, the article itself. Uh, this fellow's web page describing this. The bill of material photographs are all on my uh, are all at the link in the description below. I ordered the toroids and the binocular toroids uh, two apertures and enough wire to complete the kit from kitsandparts.com uh, It's also called the Toroid King and uh, it's, it's, it's kitsandparts.com kitsandparts.com is uh, operated by Diz and I guess his wife maybe because I always pay to his wife's account, well, to a female account, W-A-D-I-Z.